Hello, it is Saturday, June 3rd, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday puzzle today, so we should be in, well, we should have a themeless, challenging puzzle lined up for us today. Why does that sound strange? A themeless, challenging puzzle. It's a challenging, themeless puzzle. It's interesting how language has those orders that adjectives must must go in to sound correct to a fluent speaker. Anyway, this challenging, themeless edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, Jenny Montague, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their support in sustaining this channel and this series. I really do appreciate that. And thank you to them. Thank you also to you if you are a patron. Even if you're not, thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to consider becoming a patron, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field. There you can find all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date. And I will today put up, I will do the next mini puzzle speed solve. I did not have time to do it yesterday. I will do it today. Um, so look forward to that. And of course, as a benefactor, you can also get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. So thanks again to every patron. And uh, do subscribe to the channel as well on YouTube if you've not gotten around to that. And you can also uh, subscribe to the Daily Solve Discord chat server or join it. Uh, not so much subscribe, but you can go become a member. And there is a link in the description field to that as well. All right, so let's get on to today's crossword. This is, um, as noted, a themeless Saturday crossword by John Westwig, who's constructed around half a dozen New York Times crosswords, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Someone asked me uh, in the comments, why do I count the number of crosswords in uh, dozens? And the reason is because it's so that um, when I'm doing this bit of the video and... Uh, and I'm saying, if I don't remember the precise number, which I usually don't, um, it's easier to remember a kind of ballpark like that. Sometimes I do remember the number, um, but usually I just give that ballpark. And we don't really have, I would like to use tens. Like I've mentioned before in French, they have a dizaine, which is a, about 10. And that feels like a more useful sort of approximate number to me than about a dozen. But a dozen is the, it's the approximate thing we have that's useful numerically for this purpose. So that's what I use. Anyway, it was edited, of course, as always by Will Shorts, and let's start solving. Shape or edge, say. These these appear to be nouns at first glance, but I wonder if in fact they're verbs dealing with, I don't know, if you're doing woodworking or something, you could shape something or edge it, or, or a plant maybe. Or certainly gardening, you know, um, I don't know. Set the pace. You run, uh, lead. Oh, it could be set in the past tense. Set the pa set the pace, as in you led in the race. You set the pace. Yes, I bet it is that. Let's see, shape or edge. So is it lathing maybe or something? Uh, a lathe tool? No, I don't think a shape is a lathe tool. It doesn't. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, sword in the Stone, Excalibur, from the King Arthur legends. And Chopper could be an axe. You could chop down a tree with an axe. And one below a lieutenant. Um, is it... Is it just a non-commissioned officer generally? Is it NCO? Is that the cutoff? Is a lieutenant the lowest ranked commissioned officer. I actually don't know, but it it sounds plausible to me. I think that sounds about right. Uh, let's see, shape or edge, say. Oh, landscape, yes, okay. It was to do, yes, landscaping is what I was trying to think of, not, not gardening per se, but I was thinking sort of shaping hedges and things, that kind of thing. Yes, so that, that, is, that is what's going on there. All right, actor and podcaster, Shepard, I don't know. I don't think I know. Purify in metallurgy. Deoxidize. And then that would Dax Shepard. I mean, I think I might have heard that name before. I have no idea who this person is. Goo is slime. And apple press, re oh, <laughs> apple press release is cider. 
Uh, in other words, it's what's released from an Apple press. That's pretty good. Um, city in northeast France, home of the country's oldest church. Um, oh, well, no, I don't know. I can't think what this is. And kind of is a bit. Oh, is it? Is it Metz? No. Stumper. I think I thought it I thought it was spelled this way. This doesn't look like anything. Proceeder to long or now. Air long or air now. That works before long or before now. Oh, deoxidize with a Z, sorry. Um sorry about that. Yes, this is spelled it's a difference between British English and American English. Um and this is this is correct. This will be what's in the book. What's funny because I spelled cider, <laughs> spelled cider in the American manner. So I don't know what was going on with my brain there. Um, Stumper. So this is correct. So this is that, that was right. Okay. And then Stumper is a puzzle. A puzzling question. Uh, Puzzling question isn't really a phrase. I mean, it's something to do with puzzling, so it's probably going to have an L here. Hawaiian for long. Um, I don't know. It's not lay, is it? I don't know very many Hawaiian words. Uh, enthusiastic approval in a text. Yes, yes, or maybe OMG, OMG, maybe. Um, Four-time presidential candidate beginning in 1996, Ralph Nader. Yeah, that sounds right. Because the, I was going to say, I thought maybe he would have started earlier than that. But in the previous election, I think the main independent candidate was Ross Perot. So I think Nader. And then the no country for old men or the usual suspects are... I wouldn't necessarily have called them this, but I wonder if with this end, they're neo-noir films. And because we're only referring to one of them, neo-noir film. You can sort of see it, I guess, actually. They're both pretty bleak. And they have a kind of cynicism associated with noir film. And there were some, there were some rural noir films films they weren't all they were mainly set in cities mainly san francisco new york or los angeles but they were sometimes set in more rural environments so no country for old men could fit in that respect yeah that might be the well I, i'm saying all this i don't even know if this is the answer but um but let's check some crosses wick for a molotov cocktail maybe this isn't right oh no a rag Yes, you'd use a rag as a wick for a Molotov cocktail, a sort of, you know, bottle, an improvised grenade in a bottle. Um, extract a, could be extract or extract. It could be a noun or a verb. Let's look at some of other some of the other neo-noir film crosses. 38 across as a prefix and 38 is C27 across. Oh, right, of course, it'll just be that. Um, as a prefix, big, mega, yeah, that could work. One of the so-called eight limbs of yoga, oh, I have no idea. One on base. And the merciful man, blank good to his own soul, doeth good, maybe this isn't mega. The merciful man doeth good, that sounds... Like that must be the answer. Maybe this is all wrong. Okay. Um, just took a water break. <laughs> That's the theme of the week. All right. So let's see. One on base. I have absolutely no idea. Made a return online. Oh, e-filed. So this refers to a tax return. Um, so if you, uh, I'm not usually a fan of these e words, but this is the official terminology that the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service in the U.S., uses 
to refer to filing a tax return online. They do call it e-filing, so I think I have to accept it. Part of the Tuscan archipelago. Oh, I can't think. And top of a tax form is one's name, maybe, or date of birth or age or something. No, not age, obviously. Um, what would this be? I don't know. Tax status? I'm not sure. Extract. Oh, you could glean something. You could extract it. I'm not sure that's right. Grub could be eats food. Church chorus could be a chorus of amens. Here we go. Okay, maybe these things are correct. You said it. Yes, bleat. So a you is a female sheep and a sheep might bleat. So this is what a you said. And of course, when we, well, not of course, this isn't necessarily obvious unless you just happen to, to know, but uh, it's the sort of thing that's worth remembering. This exclamation point, when you see that in a clue, usually what this means is that the clue will be stated about the answer rather than uh, being synonymous with it. So you said it is something that's a comment you could make about a bleat, or maybe in this case, in response to it, perhaps, in a sort of punny way. Uh, but anyway, there we go. So, oh, Elba, Elba, the island to which Napoleon was was exiled. And then top of a tax form, oh, line A. Oh, right, okay, that's true. Tax forms do have line A, line B, line C, etc., rather than being numbered in that regard, I think. And one on base is a something trainee, uh, an army trainee? You're on an army base? That could be it. So, as a oh, arrow, and the prefix is air. Yes, okay. So, arrow is an aerodynamic, is, you know, it's a common, common prefix used for things dealing with air. All right, there we go. And one of the so called eight limbs of you, oh, is it one of the asanas? Uh, yoga asanas, those poses? I don't know very much about yoga, but I do know that phrase. So that could could be the answer. I'm not certain about it, but let's check the crosses. What a strangely quiet person might have. Something to hide? That's, yes, there you go. If this person is being strangely quiet rather than being characteristically quiet, it might indicate they have something to hide. Don't hold back. It's my treat. Anything you want, you could say to somebody at a restaurant when you're treating them. And words that may fail to soften an insult. Nothing personal. Yes, there we go. Uh, rarely helps to add that something is not personal. Uh, middle of today. A D? Just wondering if the, literally the middle of the word today, at least letter-wise, is a D. Uh, middle of... Oh, no, right, okay, so there's a few different things that words like middle can mean in this kind of punny clue. Punny is indicated by the question mark. One of the things it can mean is what I said, which is literally the middle letter, but also in a hyphenated uh, phrase, often what it means is a word that could go in between the two hyphenated words. So in this case, to this day, that's a common phrase that's, you know, I've, I've, I solve puzzles to this day, and uh, that's the word that goes in the middle of to and day. Ancient navigation aids are stars, of course. And if you didn't say something directly, you hinted, hinted it, uh, hinted at it. And music genre could be emo. Oh, well, it's been ages. But it is indeed the official rock subgenre of the New York Times crossword, emo. Um, but I think it's been, I mean, I don't remember having seen this for maybe a couple of months. So there we go. Phallic object worshipped as a symbol of Shiva. Um, I don't recognize this word offhand, I don't think. And what was this again? Puzzling stumper. Puzzling um, proposal. Puzzling. I don't know. Puzzling looks correct, though. Uh, walks with difficulty. If one walks with difficulty, one limps. So this is lingam. Okay, I don't. I don't know that word, but I have to assume it's correct. I mean, the crosses seem pretty straightforward. So I think that's probably right. Enthusiastic approval in a text. Okay, OMG, yes, all right, okay. It was a combination of my two guesses. Yes, yes, and OMG, OMG, I think were what I said. So it's a, I was sort of half right twice over, um, which I don't think makes me fully correct, uh, even though it may mathematically. Certain cell provider is... Um, a captor. Is that right? 
Because someone captures you and puts you in a cell in the sense of putting you in prison, they're your captor, a certain cell provider, a captor. A captor. I think that, I mean, it feels like it works to me. What about uh, Hawaiian for long loa? Oh, right, okay. So we have mono loa, for instance. That makes sense that that would deal with size. Okay, I think that is probably correct. Um, and what has spikes of interest? Cleats? I mean, cleats have spikes. Why are they of interest? I mean, it's unusual for shoes to have spikes on them, so maybe that's an interesting element of cleats. I don't know. That might be right. Let's look at some crosses, see if it works. Story for the ages. A tale or a yarn or a saga. None of those work here. I'm not very confident about cleats anyway, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, taken aback, maybe? Oops. And most common Korean surname. Um, I mean, K is a common letter in transliterations of Korean surnames, but I can't think of what this one is. Oh, that's frustrating. What has spikes of interest? Inclined to be verbose, informally talky. You're verbose, you use quite a few words, and they're copied for partners. Um, criminals cover, maybe. Something DNA. Uh, oh, name, an assumed name. Maybe this isn't talky. Is it gassy? Someone's gassy? I think that can mean verbose. Let's see. Assumed name. Oh, Kim. Kim obviously is an incredibly common Korean surname. That's I was thinking Park, things like that. But uh, Kim, I wouldn't have known it was the most common, but it's unsurprising to me that it is. It would certainly be one of the top few. I'm very annoyed that I didn't get to that from the K. Uh, what has spikes of interest are... I don't know. Caucus or something? That doesn't fit anyway, so it doesn't matter. They're copied for partners and jeers to a team at an away game, say. Abuse? Feels like an incredibly specific clue if the answer is as broad as abuse. Hmm. Story for the A oh, Story for the Ages is a saga, though. That was one of the things I was guessing. Oh, cactus has spikes of interest. Again, what makes them of interest? I guess I guess they're distinctive and it makes it gives the cactus visual a visual identity and it's sort of interesting. And you could have a cactus in your cactus plant in your home, a small cactus plant, and these spikes would be interesting, I guess. They're copied for partners. Keys, you could make a, a um, copy of, you know, keys to your home for a partner. Winner of three Emmys for Outstanding Game Show Host. Oh, Pat Sajak was the, was, is, I'm not sure, the host of um, uh, Wheel of Fortune, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's correct. Uh, so this does look like abuse, doesn't it? And just in, oh, sorry, I haven't read the clue. Byzantine emperor known as Rhinotmatos, the slip-nosed. Oh, Justinian. Uh, which Justinian was this? I don't know the second. I'm not sure. Frost-covered poetically. R oh, rhyme. Rhymey, I guess, maybe if it's covered in frost. The rhyme would be the frost itself. How dogs kiss. Wetly. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, I suppose. And bookstore section, you could have a new section as opposed to the used book section. So, actress sink of Stranger Things. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, sorry. Hell euphemistically. Oh, the H word could be a euphemism for hell. All right. Oh, Sadie Sink? I've heard that name. Who do I know? Where do I, how do I know that name? Was this person in other things other than Stranger Things, I wonder? Let's see. Uh, that would be just any in the second. Okay. And then become acclimatized, e.g., is to adopt, maybe, or to adapt, more accurately. To become acclimatized to a region is to adapt to it, for instance. And then part of an underground system could be 
something and ran could be oh i was thinking lead like set the pace up here but um it's too many letters for that um ran oh i can't see it that's annoying and a puzzling stumper a puzzling pro problem a puzzling problem is that a phrase i don't know <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it's a real stumper. It's a puzzling problem. It's just not a, it's not really a puzzling problem. Isn't really a, it's an idiomatic phrase. It's not really something people say commonly. So it's just funny for it to be uh, an answer in this way, if it is indeed the answer. It's a bit of a puzzling problem to me, a bit of a stumper. Anyway, ran, maybe it's, maybe it's not the answer. I don't know. We'll find out. Part of an underground system and... Complete, it could be underground meaning criminal, or it could be underground meaning literally underground, or it could be underground just meaning secret in general. Completely lose it. I'm going to delete this just because I, I just don't know. Shows up out of nowhere. Pop, pop up. Uh, shows up out of nowhere. Pop up some things if we're referring to a show as a noun. Medi yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, this probably is plural because medium capacity could be. ESP, extrasensory perception, or the ability that a sort of spirit medium claims to possess. So if you get wise, you something up, smarten up, there we go, yes, get wise, smarten up. And place for a bouquet maybe is a uh, den, you can invent this, seems too vague. Other side us and them, or what? Um, app name for a warrior st warrior stew. This has come up. I think this this exact clue has come up in the New York Times crossword several times, even just during the, the period in which I've been doing this YouTube series. I think this has come up multiple times. <laughs> anyway, the man's name stew because you're stewing over something. You're worrying over it. Okay. To completely lose it is to... Speaking of that, I saw, I just happened to see something the other day, this kind of nominative determinism sort of thing. Um, and is it Anthony Perkins, who played Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's film Psycho, has two sons, Elvis and Osgood. And Elvis was named for uh, Elvis Presley, and Osgood was named for Anthony Perkins' own father, Osgood Perkins, who is himself an actor in Hollywood as well. And Elvis Perkins went, the son went on to become a musician and Osgood Perkins went on to become an actor and film screenwriter. So it's just, I don't know, funny, one of those funny things. I want, you want, you wonder to what extent that was <laughs> destined for them. Uh, okay. Other side. I don't know. Completely lose it. Shows up out of nowhere. Big act in K-pop. Oh, is it BTS again? Weren't they just in the puzzle yesterday? Um, I think I think that's probably the answer. And then completely lose it is something. <laughs> and shows up out of nowhere is it's not pop up anything. Shows up out of nowhere. I don't know. And the stumper, I mean, this really just, it has to be a puzzling problem. I don't know what else could it, it could be, especially with this M there. And ran is, oh, bled, as in the colors ran in, you know, in my shirt. I washed it in hot, too hot water. And the they colors bled, they ran. That, that, that's the answer. Part of an underground system is a sewer. There we go. Uh, here in London, London for uh, several years now, there's been this construction of the the super sewer, I think is how it's colloquially referred to. It's just an absolutely enormous um, kind of sewer upgrade for London, which has been uh, using essentially kind of kind of a direct lineage, sewers that run a direct lineage back to, I think basically the same sewer system that was constructed by, I think, Joseph Bazalgette in the Victorian era. It's incredible how much Victorian infrastructure is still directly in use in London. I mean, they really did build for the for the future during that time period. Anyway, 
completely lose it is to blow, oh, blow a fuse. There we go. And 1970 hit for the Kinks. Lola, oh, that's a great song for the Kinks. And shows up out of nowhere is teleport. Oh, teleports. I didn't, should have thought about that. Other side is one's foe, of course. Should have thought about that as well. And a place for a bouquet maybe is an urn. You could, you could put flowers in an urn serving as a vase. And so there we go. That was the, oh, sorry. I just noticed something. Um, we have something, anything, and nothing. Oh, that's very clever. But look at that. It's a little sort of, it's a little sort of a crypto theme. It's a it's sort of pseudo theme hidden in this themeless puzzle. Um, yeah, I mean, that was obviously intentional. There's no, there's no possible way that could have happened by accident. So it's clearly, it's clearly there um, just as a fun little, yeah, as I say, kind of a micro theme uh, in an otherwise themeless crossword. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Very good. Nice one by John Westwick. Oh, that's that's. I already thought this was a pretty good puzzle, and that that improved my appreciation of it. Um, I am puzzled by puzzling problem. I wonder if this is. I guess it doesn't need to be a kind of established phrase, but generally, when you get a compound, you know, when you get a compound word or or a multi-word phrase in a crossword like this, usually it's because it's the kind of thing that would actually be sound natural in language. Um, and this doesn't sound unnatural, but it's not a common phrase, I don't think. But let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, let me know how you fared with this puzzle, whether you enjoyed it. I'm always curious to know it. Also, if you found it particularly difficult or easy for a Saturday, let me know in the comments or the Daily Solve Discord um, chat server. And and that's that for the Saturday crossword. So there we have it. And now I'm off to go record the um, mini puzzle weekly speed solve for the patrons. Sorry for the delay on that again, but I'm going to go do that momentarily. And I will also, of course, be back tomorrow for the Sunday crossword, the big, the jumbo, roughly midweek, mid-difficulty grid. Join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.